Hello everyone, my name is Utkar Shukla and today we will be discussing about our human body and we will be seeing it from inside. So, let's begin. Our first organ which we are going to talk about is the lungs. The lungs are the part of our body which help us breathe and they are two in pair connected with the tube. We will learn about them because they are in the trachea part. Okay, so there are two pair. One is the right lung and one is the left lung. The right lung is three-lobed lung. Meaning, if you could cut the lung into parts, you can easily separate it into three parts. While the left lung is two-lobed. Means, if you could cut it into two parts, means if you cut it into parts, two parts can be easily obtained. And this lung, this lung, this pair of lung consists of the respiratory tract. Okay, means this lung is the part of the respiratory tract. Now, what is this respiratory tract? It is the way through which the air enters our body, means enters our lung and then goes back out of the body. Okay, so now let's read more about it. Before going to respiratory tract, we need to understand what this respiration is. So, actually, respiration is the process by which the food is oxidized to form energy. Mom means like whatever food we eat is oxidized it means the oxygen we take is mixes with the chemicals chemically mixes to form energy water and carbon dioxide water and carbon dioxide are byproducts okay and this oxidized what does oxidized means oxidized means when anything chemically mixes with the oxygen then it is called oxidized then that thing is called oxidized and through this respiration energy is released and the system, these all the organs which consist of the respiratory system is called, means are called respiratory system. This complete system is called a respiratory system. And it contains of many things. So let's study about it. So the first thing from starting is our nose. We take in the air through our nose and then it enters our nasal cavity. Okay. So what is there in this nasal cavity? Actually, there is some sticky substance known as mucus and hairs are there present there okay so what happens is that every dust and everything that we take in through our nose sticks over there and is not taken into our lungs that's why it is said not to take air through our mouth okay okay and also that imagine that you're living in a very cold place or in we can imagine that we are living in a hot place also very cold place so the air we take in is very much colder than our human body in normal places too so, in the nasal cavity, the air which we take in is heated. Means, not heated, actually, uh, it becomes equal to the temperature of our body. Okay. Now, after the nasal cavity, it leads to the pharynx. It is a common path of food and the air to go. So, what happens when we eat food, it, uh, it, it has a pipe which divides this pharynx into two parts. And it, it is, like we said, there are U-turns present in the roads. Same is present here where they are open. So that's why we cough like when the food, like whenever we are talking while eating food. So the food enters our windpipe, means this respiratory tract, and that's why I cough and cough it out. So it's said we should not talk and laugh while eating. Okay. So over there, the food pipe, we call that the food pipe, the esophagus, and this trachea, which ends this air, comes at a point. Then after the pharynx, it leads to the larynx. What is larynx? Actually, Larynx is the part of our body, it's a tube like thing which has vibratory cords inside it. What are they? Actually, they are cords like thing which vibrate when air comes in. That's how I am able to speak, and you are able to speak. Okay, so what happens is that whenever air comes in, it vibrates, and that's why we are able to speak. And without them, we might not be able to speak. And uh, like when singers speak, means when singers sing, actually, I meant to say, uh, some singer can speak for 10 seconds without taking air. And some can only speak, uh, means sing till 3 seconds. Why is that too? It is because they are made of muscles and muscles can be stretched. The more you practice singing, the more they will be stretched. And this is how this stretching happens. And similarly, our brain is also a muscle. That's why it is said we should learn everything and we can learn. Okay, let's come back to the point again. So after the larynx, it goes to the trachea. Actually, trachea is a tube-like thing. Okay, here, actually from here only the special lung parts. Okay, so it is a trachea tube like thing. Okay, and then it divides into two bronchi. As you can see over here, these are the two bronchi. Okay, and then these bronchi enters our lung. Now they enter our lung. 
okay so now they have entered our lungs but in the lung also they divides into some more parts so this bronchi divide into bronchioles and this bronchioles at the end have alveolar sacs which are means round means round balls and inside those balls are some more balls small balls we can imagine that those big balls are alveolar sacs and the small balls are the alveolus and this alveolus skin means the boundary of this alveolus is so thin that air can pass through it that's how so what happens is that blood capillaries surround it and uh, it separates this alveolus separates oxygen from all the gases and oxygen enters the blood uh, vessels because of blood vessels and that's how energy is produced over here okay but there are some more parts which are responsible for this process happening like this thing this fluid fluid like thing which you can see here this is called a pleural fluid it keeps the lungs moist and as i was telling the right lung is divided into two three three lobes first lobe second lobe three lobe and the left is one and two right okay then one more very important part is this this muscular sheet diaphragm the spelling is d i a p h r a g m because many people get confused about it what happens in this diaphragm is as we all know there is air pressure all around that's why this wind blow and all and all okay that's why we wind blow so what happens is that there is no force acting on which there is not a fan over in our lungs which sucks in the oxygen actually it is that see the diaphragm is plain now imagine so what happens is that whenever the diaphragm moves down moves down so the size of lungs increases okay it will move down the size size of lungs increases because they are connected and as the size increases the volume also increases what do i mean by volume volume is the capacity of anything to hold anything inside it like the volume of our lungs is how much air it can uh, store inside it so as it will move down more air can be stored so what happens is that the air which was already present in the lung become less to fill it up so air enters our lungs okay and when the air has to be taken out so the diaphragm moves up when it moves up the lungs become small the volume become less and as the volume become less the oxygen means the air present becomes more over there so the air leaves out our body thus creating a balance that's how this diaphragm is a very important part and it helps us breathe so this was only about this respiratory tract and respiratory system and one more thing one more thing that there are two types of respiration two types of respiration one is which takes place in the presence of oxygen which we take in okay we are taking in oxygen so that is called aerobic respiration okay and energy is produced 38 atp is atp is like they are 38 meter 38 cm so atp is a unit adenosine triphosphate adenosine triphosphate atp okay it's a unit in which this energy is counted so in this way energy 32 atp is by water and carbon dioxide is by products what are by products products which may or might not be useful and they are formed Uh, means they are formed when some other product is formed like gold gold is a by product of zinc and uh, zinc and some other metal so they can be useful gold is useful and they cannot be useful for us carbon dioxide is not useful okay and there is one more type of respiration which is like whenever you are running a lot you are tired so what happens is that your body the air means the energy which has to be produced cannot be produced at the right time because you cannot take that much air at, at a time there is a particular limit so what happens is that without the air oxygen i meant oxygen respiration starts and that respiration is called anaerobic respiration which occurs in our muscles okay it occurs in our muscle and then only two atp energy is released and the by products are lactic acid and carbon dioxide means lactic acid mainly and lactic acid what is lactic acid actually it is a type of acid which make us cramp like whenever we run a lot our legs pain so it is due to lactic acid so it was a complete thing about respiration respiratory tract and respiratory system so let's move on to our next organ hmm let's go to the blood pumper can you guess who is it actually it's our heart very very important our heart now 
We all know that it is responsible for pumping blood. Okay, but there are two more functions. They are the least function. They can do how much much things. Let me tell you some though two more functions. The first function, which is the first function after the unknown function, is that it also may contains a circular cycle over the over our body. For example, whenever we go out somewhere and there's a cut on our body. the blood comes out and after while it freezes over there but in our body it doesn't happens you might say because our body temperature is much warmer than our atmosphere that's not true if you are living in a very very cold place then your body temperature also decreases right why why the blood is not freezing actually it is due to the circular cycle and circular cycle doesn't means only a circle can do that circular cycle means if it is a it is the point a and this is the point b the blood over at the point b can also reach to point a and the blood at point a can also reach to point b and this is what circular cycle is and it keep keeps continuous cycle so that no blockage is also formed and if the cycle is stopped the blockage can be formed on every vein like these parts the circular parts create the blockage at the first and they are present at a very high number in our means in our heart as you can see so it also keeps the blockage away from your body Okay, so now let's see the parts of our heart as we saw for the lung. It also has many parts, but majorly it can be divided into two parts: the left part and the right part. Okay, but the right part can also be divided into many parts. Okay, so mainly they are right atrium, right ventricle, and pulmonary wave. And the left part can be divided into left atrium and left ventricle and pulmonary wave. they are same but the, they are names are different what are their functions so let's study about so this right part this right part receives deoxygenated blood from the body and this left part is responsible for releasing that blood good blood okay so it receives the blood from the vena cava and this interior vena cava it receives and then this artera descending artera is responsible for sending out the blood throughout the body and this cycles goes on goes on goes on goes on for continuous time so this was all about our blood uh, it consists of the means our circulatory system also but we will get to know about it later on so let's move on to the organ majorly the organs the next organ is a stomach of the digestive system okay so what this is for so it is a food storage bag we can say where food is stored actually not stored kept for 4 to 5 hours it stays in the stomach of the food for around 4 to 5 hours Okay, so what happens in our stomach is that it is a J-shaped thing. J, yeah, you cannot see it as a J, but it is actually a J-shaped muscular bag. It is made up of muscles. That is why it is called muscular bag, and it is very, very, very important for digestion. And please mention that there is a difference between digestion and absorption. We all get confused about them. Digestion means breaking down of large, large molecules of our food. like proteins are present glu- uh, proteins are present fats are present so they are molecules big big molecules we have to break them down so that is what digestion is but using that proteins to uh, to our body is absorption absorbing that proteins smaller proteins so stomach helps in digestion breaking down and it breaks down the protein hmm? be aware let's check what this be aware is Oh, we are in the stomach now, and this is a this message is from our stomach. So actually, there is this acid present in our stomach, which is named as hydrochloric acid (HCl) in chemistry known as, and it is really really dangerous for our skin and all and all and all other muscles also. And the question occurs: Why does our stomach stays healthy from it? Means stays nice from it? Actually, it is due to the thing this layer. The inner wall of our stomach is made up of acid-proof substance. That's why it is something like this. Okay, so actually, this stomach is connected to the esophagus. Actually, as we discussed, it is the line through which our food reaches from our mouth and then to our stomach. So this was all about stomach. Let's go to our next organ, which is the pancreas. So it is that it is also an organ of our digestive system. After the uh, after the food is in the stomach, it enters our small intestine. Okay, there are two intestine, large and the small. So first it enters the small intestine. 
actually small intestine is a narrow tube like thing but very long very 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 long thing which is coiled up in our small small space okay so what happens is that it is responsible for absorption of food here the food is absorbed okay and then and then it enters the large intestine this one it is much wider than the small intestine but much smaller also okay smaller in the smaller in the size and wider in this bit with okay and this thing this is a very fascinating thing in our large intestine actually previously all the scientists thought that this was this was our tail like we grow from the uh, monkeys to humans this was our tail and this was of no use but now we know that there is a relation between our body and the bacteria and bacteria so what do the bacteria say we will help you digest and absorb your food please let us stay in your yourself so the body says okay okay i have a lot of space in me i will live i will make you stay in me so what happens is that the body is keeping these bacteria here and uh, and saying them to do the digestion and absorption for us so here all the bacteria good bacteria how it turns into curd due to bacteria right so good bacteria live here okay then after the small intestine it goes to the large intestine and in the large intestine reabsorption of water occurs so that there should be no waste of water right we have to save water that's why so here the, all the water which has not been absorbed till now is reabsorbed and then the undigested food is thrown out of the body let's go to the next one hey wait someone is saying learn more about me let's check who is hmm what is it oh it is by our small intestine actually our small intestine is saying that that the insider body means its inside part has finger like projections on it which we call as villi and these will i looks like these these will i help increase the surface area if something is plain less surface area will be there but if they are finger like the surface area will increase that's why these will i are present okay so now let's move on we have covered many organs but still but still many are left like one of them is the liver with important part right it actually produces bile bile is a very important juice digested juice which is important which is help here means responsible for emulsification of fat what do i mean by emulsification a very important term emulsification means breaking down of large molecules into smaller which is digestion also but emulsification is short term for it okay so then one more is pancreas it stores the bile it can the liver cannot take it at any time when the food is not present right so the pancreas store it and when the it is the right time it releases it and there is one more thing this salivary gland what do i mean by gland all these thing liver pancreas and salivary gland they are they are glands only three glands are there digestive glands i am i am talking about digestive glands three digestive glands are there salivary gland pancreas and the liver and liver is the largest of them okay so the salivary gland is present behind and beside our teeth means uh, we can say beside our teeth and behind the part means around the neck part they are present and secret saliva that sticky thing in our mouth yeah that's only what is saliva is so what saliva does actually saliva kills all the bacteria in the food that so that oh, no infection is present means no infection occurs in the stomach okay so this is what our this means salivary gland too okay so now let's move away there's someone knocking up oh who is it let's talk to it <clears throat> hello can we talk to you hey who are you mm-hmm. uh, i am the brain mm, uh, who am i talking to oh hello brain um i am utkarsh and i want to talk to you i want to know about you after means i have learned about all of your bits all of our body parts just you are left hmm seems interesting let me tell you my about me actually you can divide me into majorly three parts the cerebrum it is the biggest and the front part of me it is responsible for reading thinking learning and your emotions also okay sadness anger everything then it is the cerebellum the back part 
it is responsible for our muscular balance and how we walk and then is our stem the brain stem it is present over this part over the back part actually it connects me to the nervous system and the nerves hmm interesting can you tell me how much means how much store you can how much you can store because scientists still not know about you hmm actually that's a secret but i am muscle and you know that muscles can be stretched as much you can learn everything and anything so keep learning and some scientists say i can store 1000 gb 1000 tb and a lot but i can store um, unlimitedly and that's not found out till there are two more parts of me if you divide me vertically the left and the right the left and the right so what it does the left part controls the right body means if you raise your right hand your left brain is working and you if you raise your right hand your left brain is working and it works vice versa okay so this was about me do you know do you want to know anything more about me oh yes you look fascinating can you tell me about your move functions hmm there are many of my functions one of the such is controlling everything in the body controlling every motion every reaction and even working on nights that's why i have to work every time every time and that's why i'm very busy hmm you think a lot and do you know only 10% of me has been discovered till now hmm hmm so now we have studied the whole body so we can leave so bye bye brain Hey wait bye but you forgot about the kidneys they are very important oh oh i will visit them for sure okay bye bye mr brain bye bye now let's see our next organ oh there is a code before it the sound body is a product of sound mind I means a perfect body a good body is a product of good thoughts and a good mind and here are our kidneys actually they are responsible for filtering the liquids in our body and they have special mechanisms which help them filter liquid naturally like in filters we add filter paper and all and all they do it naturally so this were about the major organs present in our body and it is a complete human body we talked about our brain and meet the mr brain and esophagus lungs heart stomach liver kidneys small intestine large intestine our pancreas the liver glands and all and this is the complete human body and this is the very end and a very very thanks to you thank you